Hey everyone, I got James again. I reeled him back. He's like really hard to get. This guy is like one of the hardest people in the world to to get over. Anyway, um, I'm just going to make this up today. I really like to talk about probiotics because it's something that a lot of people don't really know enough of. They don't know really what the big deal is. They just know it's a bunch of bacteria in your gut. Did you know you've got almost five pounds of bacteria in your gut? That's a hundred trillion microorganisms. That's 10 times more living little critters than you have human cells in your body. 10 times more other foreign creepy uh, microorganisms than human cells. Most of it's in your gut and you really don't know much about you don't it you don't see it as much because they're a lot smaller than human cells but they're there and they're really important and without them we'd be dead so what most people don't understand is what are they there for what do they do they must help with i know they help with digestion a little bit um but uh there's a battle going on inside us all the time and there's good guys and there's bad guys. Well, they all have a purpose. We like to label them good or bad or whatever. But uh, the general concept is that when you have more bad, quote unquote, bacteria in your gut, uh, and it outnumbers the good guys, you're gonna start having problems. A lot of which is obesity and diabetes. They even linked autism with it. Um, so we're gonna talk today about that and why it's important, what it is, how to make sure you've got more good than bad, um, and what the importance is of this stuff. So, hi James, welcome. Hello, thank you. Most people aren't aware that, I mean, five pounds is a lot of weight. Yeah. <laughs> and to have all that swarming, it's like a microcosm, it's like a universe of living things inside us. 75% mm -hmm. of our immune system is in the gut. Right, yeah, the gut flora actually provide a lot of roles outside the immune system too. As you pointed out, digestion is one of the big factors. Controlling candida is another big factor. Uh, the flora produce acids that actually keep the candida under control by turning off the growth gene and keeping it in its benign yeast form as opposed to its pathogenic fungal form. Right. They also produce vitamins for the body B vitamins, vitamin K are generated by the flora. The flora help to generate bactericides and peroxide that control pathogens, which is, again is part of the, the immune, immune system. system. And the peroxides also activate white blood cells. So yeah, the flora are very, very important. It's not just bacteria, by the way, too. It's also, it does include like, yeast strains and stuff are also right. part of it. Let's talk about B12. B12 is basically bacteria poop. That's right. what it is, right? So in a way, we should be producing some of it anyway in our gut. Yeah, we do produce small amounts of B12 through the flora. Uh, in fact, the in the old days, that's where actually they got B12 from, was from the sewage system. They would actually extract the B12. Now they synthesize it, but it, it used to be extracted actually from the sewers to get the B12 that was being excreted in the feces that was being generated by the flora. We have a hundred trillion organisms in there eating and pooping. Mm -hmm. Part of that poop is B vitamins and stuff. It's yeah. good stuff. Um, and there's also good guys and bad guys. It's interesting, uh, the, what, the more you learn how there's this, how everything is a, a battle for survival. The bad quote unquote bacteria can actually send out signals to make you hungry, to increase your appetite so you eat more. It, may, it throws things off balance and it actually can raise your insulin resistance. Yeah, insulin resistance uh, yeah, is where the receptors on your cells are either uh, blocked or closed. So they can't, the way it would work, here's your cell, here's your insulin receptor. When the insulin sensitizes that cell, the cell uptakes glucose. So if that is closed or blocked, then there's no way for the insulin to sensitize the cell to uptake glucose. That's insulin resistance. You always want to have more good bacteria than bad bacteria. They, you can't have just all one or the other. You have to kind of live in balance a little bit. That's why you can never get rid of your yeast completely. Primary food source for your flora are the fibers. So fibers are, um, in short, they're linked glucose molecules in these big massive chains. So the bacteria secrete enzymes like cellulase and hemocellulase that break down those fibers into simple glucose molecules. And they take those glucose molecules and they ferment them, producing the beneficial acids that help to keep us healthy. Um, and basically, you know, actually a fuel source for the bacteria. Glucose is a form of sugar, so do the probiotics like sugar as a food source? Uh, yeah, glucose itself, but most of the glucose, that you, if you were to ingest glucose orally, most of it's going to get absorbed long before it ever reaches most of the bacteria in your gut. So most of the glucose that actually feeds the flora will come from the fibers. So people who eat bad food, it has a lot of sugar in it, a lot mm -hmm. of 
carbs that turn into sugar. They feed the yeast. Yeah, you got, well, the, the yeast candida and basically uh, can live further up in the gut than most of your bacteria will. The majority of our gut flora is actually in the colon. It's not in the, the rest of the intestine has trace amounts of the flora, not very much, but the yeast, because of the uh, different pH level in the upper parts of the intestine stuff can actually come up further. Mm -hmm. And so it's more apt to feed the yeast than it would be your uh, good bacteria in the colon. There, there's a fascinating connection and a really important connection between gut health and your health and weight and obesity and diabetes is all connected. They, they, they call it diabetes now. <laughs> Bad bacteria can make you sluggish, sick and fat and make you gain weight, whereas the healthy gut flora actually can help you stay thin and lean. Yeah, it actually makes a lot of sense though because if you look at it this way, your good bacteria again generate these beneficial acids. One of the roles of the beneficial acids is nutrient absorption. And when we get the nutrition we need, we, has le we have less cravings for food. Mm -hmm. So it's like this, per if everything's working right, we're eating healthy, everything works right. But when you eat candy bars and you know soda and, and crap, everything just gets, gets thrown off and there's no fiber in the diet. Yeah. If we don't have high fiber diet, then we just keep getting the signals to eat, 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 hence the fat Americans. People that don't get their 100 grams of fiber a day, they're always hungry and they said that like 80% of all Americans don't even get the recommended daily amount of fiber in their body mm. and, and uh, meat and hamburgers just don't count. It's fiber. It's right. usually like good plant foods. Right. That should be added. Well, there's another factor there is, again, we know that fiber slows down glucose absorption. So without the fiber, like I say, again, you mentioned eating a candy bar, right. your sugar levels are going to spike, your insulin is going to spike in response, and that's going to overdrop your blood sugar, and you're actually going to go into, in essence, a hypoglycemic state, which right. again is going to create food cravings again to keep the blood sugar levels up. Studies have shown that changes in the gut flora can increase the rate at which we absorb fatty acids and carbohydrates and increase the storage of calories as fat. Mm -hmm. This is kind of interesting because it means that somebody with a bad gut flora can eat the same amount of food and calories as a person with good healthy gut flora, mm. but they absorb more of the nutrients and get fatter. Yeah, when you're talking about absorbing nutrients, you got to make sure to point out the difference between your good nutrients and because uh, right. yeah. even glucose is technically a nutrient, right? Because uh, you need it for right. you know right. cell but function. What's interesting is they they took the the gut flora from a fat mouse mm. and put it in transferred it into the gut of a skinny mouse and the skinny mouse started getting fat because it was overwhelmed with the bad bacteria mm -hmm. and in return if they took the, the, the gut flora from a healthy skinny mouse and put it in a fat mouse it started losing weight because it had more good bacteria than bad bacteria. Mm -hmm. So there's different types of bacteria. There's ones that are make you mm -hmm. obese and there's ones that make you thin and just having a bunch of and you know when people go to the store and they buy probiotics, the two main kinds that you get are the lactobacillus and the bifidobacterium, which is just milk digesting things. That's mm -hmm. really what they do. But they're useless for there's there's like what a thousand different types. Actually, yeah, several thousand yeah. different beneficial strains. Right. Uh, and the ones that we really bacteria. need for the health are not those two. It's, mm -hmm. it's the ones that really contribute to overall health and metabolism, weight reg regulation, all that are not the two that you buy at the store. And it's not how many. You know, when they say on the bottle, it says contains five billion things of what? Two strains? It's better to have a few of a lot of strains. Like the more strain varieties, mm -hmm. the better. If you swallow something, it's going to get killed in the stomach acid. Mm -hmm. Probiotics are living things. It's a pretty harsh environment to have to make it through to get down to your colon to mm -hmm. where they can thrive. And um, so really the best thing is... Cultured foods. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I like cultured food. Well, actually, a couple of reasons I like them. One, you know they're live strains because uh, a lot of the probiotic supplements you buy in the store, you don't know how long they've been stored, right. how were they yeah, stored, right. were they shipped in the heat. You know, all these things can affect the viability of these probiotic uh, bacteria that are in the capsules. So I really don't trust the probiotic capsules. Right. Right. And the cultured foods, you want, again, you know they're live. Two, you know um, that there's a wider range of the bacteria 
because it's not just again as you mentioned you know one or two strains there's right. like kefir has oh i think it's 20 some odd different strains of right. beneficial bacteria plus uh, some beneficial yeast in there that uh, helps culture it and the third reason is you get higher levels of the bacteria than you would in a capsule because you drink a, a glass of kefir again or eat a bowl of sauerkraut fresh sauerkraut mm. something like that you're going to get way larger amounts of these active bacteria than you can out of a capsule of a supplement right. and it's a numbers game because you know the acid can kill off a lot of the bacteria but you're always going to have survivors there's going to be some that are going to escape the stomach acid mm -hmm. but the higher levels you have to begin with the better odds that you know they're going to get through the stomach acid to colonate below the stomach that's why it's good to drink a lot of water with with mm -hmm. your while you're doing probiotics. Yeah, and first thing in the morning, too, is a big help. Stomach acid levels are lowest when you first wake up in the morning. So, like, when I do my kefir, well, usually I either do it before I go to bed because stomach acid levels will again drop while you're sleeping, or I'll do it uh, first thing in the morning right. when I get up. Right, but really the best way is to feed the ones that are already there. Mm -hmm. And that's fiber. That, right. It, it's, bloating is not necessarily bad. It's just... It, it's a bunch of reactions that are happening inside you as a result of, okay, when you eat a lot of fiber, like if people e email me all the time, so I'm eating a bunch of salad, but I'm bloating like crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Or I'm eating a bunch of fiber. Fiber is notorious for making people bloat, getting them mm -hmm. gas, right? Well, what's happening? Let's break this down. Why, why does this happen? Your gut uh, bacteria is eating, mm -hmm. the, is eating the fiber. So right. they're living things. They eat, they, die, they, they metabolize, and they, die, they, they poop out something, right? Mm -hmm. And they create gas. It's like digestion creates gas. Gas. It's part of the process. So when you have a trillion organisms eating and pooping, you're going to get some kind of waste product from mm -hmm. that, right? Which is part of the bloating. Yeah, the fermentation process generates carbon dioxide gas, which is a lot of the bloating process. Now you can feed the yeast with bad food, or you can feed the good bacteria with good stuff, like now, like plant fibers and things. So when you're having a lot of plant food, is it normal to bloat? For a while, or should you just be flat the whole time and not like... Well, it depends a lot on the fiber, too. Certain fibers are more notorious for causing bloating. Of course, like we know Chokes. beans, for example. Yeah. yeah. And actually, psyllium. Uh, psyllium is not one of my favorite things. Yeah. It's, it's very hard in the intestine, for one, and it's notorious for causing bloating. Like, my personal uh, favorites for fibers, which are in the uh, this arena, is called prebiotics. Probiotics are bacteria, prebiotics are your, your actual fibers, and then if they're combined, they're called symbiotics. If they have Crohn's disease, they have ulcerative colitis, something like that, you don't want harsh fibers. It's just going to irritate things worse. So you want soft fibers. So what do you say to people who say, I've got too much, I'm, I look like a pregnant football? It's There's other reasons for the the enlarged abdomen. So you'd really have to look like it could be ascites from liver damage. I'm going to say and only after you eat. You blow it out and then it goes yeah, there's ways of getting around that. It, it said, again, it could be just the type of fiber they're ingesting because there are, let's say, a lot of foods. Broccoli is another one that's notorious for causing that. So it depends a lot on the fiber itself. Mm -hmm. But there's a simple way to get around that, and that's you could take something like uh, yucca root, um, get the yucca shadegra capsules or whatever at the health food store, and that actually is a surfactant. And as a surfactant, it lowers the surface tension in the water and causes the gases to go into solution. That's like digel, for example, is a silicone uh, polymer, and it's a surfactant. That's the way it works. So the gas goes into solution. Mm -hmm. And so the yucca is a natural way of doing that. It will actually cause the, the gas to go into solution and prevent that bloating. Yucca is a, um, it's actually a good uh, prebiotic anyway. Yeah, it holds moisture in the colon, so it helps, to, again, to keep a uh, good environment for growth. It's a fermentable it, fiber. Yeah, it's got a lot of uh, fiber in it, a whole lot of fiber. I don't know if you ever tried to grind this stuff yourself, but it's a lot of fiber in it. Yeah, yeah. And it's a steroidal anti-inflammatory, right. so it's really, really good for, <clears throat> again, if you have intestinal inflammatory issues and stuff, it's really good for that. Or even arthritic pain, it's good for you know, arthritis, and uh, it's anti-cancer. Lowers yeah. your cholesterol. Yeah. <laughs> a living thing, bacteria, is eating and pooping out or causing or farting or whatever it is that creates this gas. Is some of that ammonia? The ammonia is actually generated from the breakdown of the proteins. 
proteins uh, are amino acid based. Amino acids are based with ammonia molecules. So the ammonia comes from the proteins being broken down and when the amino acids themselves get broken down you create a uh, very alkaline, very toxic ammonia compound and to protect itself the body uses uh, carbonic acid to neutralize the ammonia forming uric acid. And the uric acid becomes a primary antioxidant for the body. Of course, you know, too much of you know, anything right, right, good is right. bad so it can cause problems in excess but that's rare you know, gout and stuff is not a common so, condition. So the flora producing its own gas, mm -hmm. it's kind of immune to that, right? I mean, it doesn't hurt it if it's swimming in its own gas waste product. Yeah, it's just carbon dioxide, which, you know, our bodies generate carbon dioxide all the time. Our blood is full of it. Uh, that's part of our uh, maintaining our everything from our blood pressure to, again, protecting us from ammonia and so on. So carbon dioxide serves a lot of purposes in the body. Like stomach acid formation is another one and mm -hmm. so on. So our bodies generate a lot of carbon dioxide gas in the first place. And so it's not really toxic unless you have, you know, all carbon dioxide, no oxygen, then of course it'd be a problem. But right. <laughs> Can we have too much flora? Uh, I've heard of people, you know, they say that, yeah, you can, that you can have uh, so much uh, good flora and stuff that it can create the dysbiosis, but it'd be really tough to do because it's kind of self-regulating. Like when you uh, expel your feces and stuff, the majority of the feces, I think it's something like 90% of the volume, is the bacteria. It's bacteria. It's not, mm -hmm. see, that, this is the interesting thing that people don't understand is like, they think what they're pooping out is just processed food, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I, eat, I, eat, I eat my meal, it gets processed, and this is just the waste product that comes out of it. They don't realize that it's, it's mainly, I mean, a lot of that, A, gets used up as, as stored as fat or as energy, right? Mm -hmm. It gets processed, gets in here, builds your muscle, whatever it is, makes you who you are. And then whatever makes it down to the bottom, bacteria have a field day with that. They're the ones that are eating that and pooping out. So you, two, three quarters of what you're pooping out is bacteria or bacteria poop, right? Right. It's not our waste in a way where it's like the leftover party stuff from the other people. <laughs> yeah, a little bit will be cellulose and stuff that right. doesn't get broken it's, down. And some of it's food that hasn't been chewed right that you know mm. made it through, but most of it is foreign matter from other living things mm. that are coexisting with us. Uh, let's talk about enzymes. Uh, they help break down the food and absorb into the body. Does taking enzymes increase the absorption and help you get fatter? Yeah, actually it can. That's, uh, I'm not a real big fan of enzymes in the first place, not as far as supplemental enzymes for a couple of reasons. One, you know, they shut down your body's own production of enzymes if you're taking them supplementally. It's better to stimulate your body's own production of the enzymes. The second one is that a lot of the enzymes contain compounds that will break down a lot of things that we ingest into simple sugars. Like uh, a lot of your, your enzyme supplements will contain cellulase and hemocellulase again. When they even do it for candida supplements to help control candida. The problem is, is it'll digest the fibers that are in your stomach long before it ever reaches the colon. Mm -hmm. And so what you end up doing is you're breaking down all these fibers into simple glucose molecules that get absorbed instead. It can be used for energy or turned into fat. fat. And, and you're, you're starving, starving the flora. You're starving the flora, right. So what about when you're about to eat something you know isn't good for you and you take enzymes to help the body break it down, you're, the same thing happens, right? I mean, you're you're creating fat and starving the flora. Yeah, but if you're not supplying the food, like the fibers and stuff that they need for uh, right. fuel, they, yeah, you're actually starving the flora. That's why one of the reasons fiber is so important. Uh, does diatomaceous earth shred probiotics? No, it won't affect them. It actually creates more surface area from to grow on. So you can have a lot of diatomaceous earth that won't hurt the, the probiotics, so to speak. Right. But if you have if you have uh, parasites and worms and things mixed in there, it will selectively shred up the bigger parasites, but not, the, not right. the, the, the good bacteria. You were mentioning about the weight gain stuff. That's uh, One thing I was going to mention is that some of the weight loss pills out there are actually enzyme inhibitors. Like they have amylase inhibitors uh, from white kidney bean, for example. Right. And that's actually to block the enzyme amylase, which breaks down starches into sugar. Right. So if you can't break down the starches, you don't absorb them. Right, exactly. So yeah. yeah, you're right that the enzymes can contribute to weight gain in that aspect. Yeah, I have, I, I sell a product that does that. It, it, it makes it so you don't absorb or break down and absorb the sugars and starches. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's really a fine balance between, just like the gut bacteria, there's the good, there's the bad, 
I don't even like calling them good or bad. They're serving their purpose. They're doing what they're mm -hmm. designed to do. And who are you, who do you want to feed? Which side do you want to feed? Well, even the the what we call bad stuff sometimes, like you know, a lot of people think candida is bad, and it's not necessarily bad because it does you know f serve some purposes like feeding uh, the good bacteria. Mm -hmm. It's a food source for right. it, and the synthesis system would be vitamins. So it actually does serve its purpose. Again, cultured foods, fibers, right. you know, those are what's really going to build it. Because even when, you know, people take antibiotics, they think that they're killing off all their flora, and they're not. They're, there's always going to be survivors of the good bacteria. So you got to stimulate the growth of those survivors. As I said, even if you take something like the cultured food, you still won't replace the thousands of strains of beneficial bacteria that harbor your body. So again, you want to stimulate the growth. That's why I think prebiotics are more important than probiotics in the long run. The prebiotics are really good for a short term, you know, I've, I've got candidiasis, you know, or food poisoning. It's great for food poisoning. You just down as much kefir as you can in a single sitting and that good bacteria overwhelms the bad bacteria. Your symptoms clear up in about 40 minutes. So it's great for those jump starts, but in the long term you need to feed all the flora, right, all right, those other right. thousands of strains. Right, right. Which is your fiber. That's your mm -hmm. diet. Your diet, you're back to eating right, healthy right. fiber. Well, thanks, James. Uh, well, thank you. This is, this is fun. I mean, it's always fun to have you pop in. People keep emailing all the time. When's he going to show up again? Yeah, I just got an email yesterday asking when we're going to do more videos. <laughs>